always had a huge charismatic president presence, incredible. But he's now harnessed that in the service, really, of this very conspiratorial style where he just asks questions. Mm. And lots of people find it very appealing. You know, he says, you know, what, what, how, what were the real origins of the Ukraine war? You know, have we been lied to about COVID? Were lockdowns a good idea? Um, whatever your problem, uh, chances are there's a bloke on YouTube professing to have the answer. From personal enlightenment to tackling procrastination, modern day gurus are everywhere. We're living in a golden age of gurus, the Atlantic's Helen Lewis thinks, uh, after spending perhaps a little too long deep in their world for her new podcast series, The New Gurus. Helen's live with us. Morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. How was it? Um, you're right, actually. I did spend a little bit too much time there, but uh, in a way it was, I already spent too much time online, so it was nice to be able to kind of monetize it, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> just to have some excuse to be like playing YouTube videos at 3am. And tell us first of all about Russell Brand, because I was surprised to see he features in this. I think he's gone through a kind of classic guru evolution, actually, which is that he was a mainstream star. He was a you know film star, a TV comedian. He had a radio show, all of that stuff. And now he is on YouTube and actually increasingly on a platform called Rumble, which is where you go if YouTube gives you a strike for COVID misinformation. And, you know, he is uh, messianic. Like, he's always had that kind of... I first met him in 2013, 14, when he guest edited the New Statesman, and he always had a huge charismatic president, presence, incredible. But he's now harnessed that in the service, really, of this very conspiratorial style where he just asks questions. Mm. And lots of people find it very appealing. You know, he says, you know, what, what were the real origins of the Ukraine war? You know, have we been lied to about COVID? Were lockdowns a good idea? And some of it, you know... Obviously, the spirit of open inquiry is good. I wouldn't be a journalist if I didn't believe in that. But the answers never seem to be, you know, there's a war in Ukraine because Vladimir Putin invaded. You know, the vaccines <laughs> are safe yeah. and effective and we have the clinical trial data now that proves it, right? It's always this kind of like this shadowy idea that something is going on that we're not fully being told about always seems to be the answer. Uh, exactly. And I guess with the, them being a guru, are they specifically pushing a certain answer? And and how do people like Russell Brand do it? How do the other ones do it? What is the sort of common thread amongst them? Well, I would say that not all gurus are bad. For example, I have a lot mm. of time for the productivity gurus, you know, that bit of time boxing, bit of journaling, you know, <laughs> a few atomic habits. All of us could use a bit of that to kind of be more um, efficient in the way we work. But when gurus go bad, they fall into a couple of uh, things that they do. One is narcissism. So they're always talking about themselves. The second is grievance mongering. So everyone's against them. You know, they have these incredible insights. So why isn't everybody listening to them? Or it must be some sinister reason the world must be against them um you know the other one is is, is taking your money really and it's why yes. wellness is such a big industry it's why crypto is such a big industry because both of them are billion dollar industries you know people can invest under in unregulated crypto products and if they lose their money tough you know and the same thing with wellness you can buy supplements which aren't don't have any medical properties therefore don't need to be regulated and if they don't work tough so there's huge amounts of money to be made in both those sectors. And I mean, we, we can all have a good laugh about Gwyneth Paltrow and her vagina candles. And <laughs> I'm sure someone telling us about productivity no end um, can be useful. But Russell Brand in a sort of very long video or podcast um, discussing the origins of the Ukraine war sounds intensely dull. What is it that they're doing that, which is actually entertaining or, or luring people in? Oh, I mean, you know, I, I find this when I think about people who watch hours and hours of YouTube, I just think mm. you couldn't, you know, you couldn't nail my hand to the table and I would I would do it. But but equally well, I feel the same about seven hour podcasts. You know, one of the people yeah. that we cover in the series did a seven hour <laughs> podcast. And this is extraordinary to me. But I think that actually, if you look at the way that our lives have changed, the way people used to listen to radio, you know, they would often listen to it while doing the housework or cooking dinner or whatever it might be. And some of these people have stepped into that space. Um, so, you know, Joe Rogan does these very long videos, three hours long. Russell Brand's videos are often incredibly long. And people watch them when they're doing other stuff at, at the same time. Mm. And they create a kind of mythology, actually. And the other thing that happens is these very strong relationships. You know, if you buy a book by someone, you might like the author. But if you're watching or listening to hours of them every day, then you begin to feel like you know them. You begin to feel like they're your friend, actually. And it's much like... You know, if you phone your friends up and they start telling you the slightly boring details of their life, you're nonetheless interested, right? Because they're yeah. your friend. And that's what happens with these gurus. They, they become like a friend to you. Fascinating stuff, Helen. Um, we look forward to the podcast. It's the new gurus, Helen Lewis from The Atlantic. Cheers. Thank you.